One of the problems I have with guilt, one of the main ones, is it's essentially a coercive mechanism. Um, either the passive aggression projection of guilt onto someone else, and any projection of guilt is passive aggressive, uh, or the projection of guilt onto oneself. Both of these are acts of coercion. You coerce others through guilt, you essentially subvert their will, um, or you coerce yourself by subverting your own will. Um, and coercion is an inefficient means of controlling someone's behavior because you get the impression that it works so long as you the coercive force continues to be applied. Um, you're just repressing a desire. You're overpowering it with threats, essentially, uh, of guilt, or if that doesn't work, then you actually apply the out-and-out -out guilt. Um, plenty of people, I mentioned, Freud mentioned that um, you can actually feel guilty about stuff that you haven't done yet because you're thinking about doing it and you sort of think, what a terrible thought that I would actually consider doing this. And then that terrible thought doesn't seem to go away and you keep trying to beat it down with guilt before the fact to say, I'm going to regret this so horribly um, that eventually you sort of say, well, look, if I'm going to feel guilty about it for so long, I might as well go ahead and do it. That's the kind of guilt before the fact that makes guilt such a dangerous sort of thing. Um, Ephelist called it, uh, or he compared it rather, to nuclear reaction, and I would say that it's that's a, a decent comparison. Um, nuclear reaction is fine, provided it can be exactly controlled. Um, but there's no guarantee that you can control something as volatile as guilt, especially when you're using it against desires, because desires are notoriously difficult to control. So attempting to repress a desire is nowhere near as efficient as attempting to deal with that desire, to confront it head on and deal with it. Now this is not to suggest, of course, that if I see my proverbial bikini-clad woman walking up the beach, I just act on that. I've got to deal with that desire in a way that is efficient. I have to dispose of that desire, I suppose, either by finding out if I can have the object of my desire, or uh, if I cannot. Can I have it? Do I want it? If I can't have it, then what do I do about the fact that I can't have it? Do I repress the desire, or do I somehow work on the desire to, to reconcile it? Uh, and, we, and as a society, we have gigantic apparatus that we built up to deal with our desires, and you know, to deal with desires that we can't express, um, in, or that we can't um, yield to, I guess, or that we can't cater to. Uh, world's oldest profession springs to mind in this case. And there's any number of possibilities here. So, guilt, hmm, no, very inefficient. It's essentially repression, and it's just storing up the problem. It's putting the skeletons, piling them up in, in the attic. And we know that eventually, you know, they're all going to burst out of there, and, you know, they could take over because they're still there. They're only held down there so long as the force is applied. So long as my, I keep my boot on the throat of, my, of that which I desire using guilt, the desire is at bay. But it's still there because I haven't confronted it. I haven't attempted to reconcile myself to it. I've essentially said, I really want that, but the only way I can deal with it is to coerce it, that desire. Or, conversely, when I project it on other people. I want to control people, but I don't believe in walking up and whipping them, so I get passive-aggressive, which is, you know, the same idea. Um, if you've ever been the victim of passive aggression, or I shouldn't even say a victim, I would say if you've ever been on the receiving end of it, you know that you've been on the receiving end of it, and it still bothers you, but you can't really seem to get out of it. You, you know, oh, I hate it when she does that to me, or he does that to me. Uh, but you're still, you're, you're left frustrated and you can't do anything. You've been coerced. <laughs> um, and 
As I say, it's an act of aggression, it's an act of coercion that is inefficient because it doesn't deal with the underlying source of conflict in the first place. That is ultimately how you deal with things like that. That is ultimately how uh, you can healthily motivate yourself in terms of dealing with um, potential negative desires or impossible desires that you can't seem to work out. Coercion only stores up trouble for the future. It only clamps the lid down harder on it. And as time goes by, more desires are added to it. And, you know, you can see, using the pressure cooker metaphor, what the obvious eventual eventuality might be. Thanks for the response.